Okay, now remember, you three guards are in there to stop their fast break. I want you to make them have to walk it down the court. Well, you saw who they put on the floor. It looks like they're going to try to run against us. In an unprecedented move, Coach Haskins is starting time, five right? Negro players. And that's like a spit in the face to us. A first in NCAA championship history. Now I want you to get angry. I want you to go out there first time you get the ball and dunk it. Stick your armpits in the rim. I don't care if you have to run someone over to do it. We know we're faster than we can spit right back. Send them a message. I really overworked myself in high school because I had to get into a good college and I had to have a career that would pay enough to live. But now it's not that I don't care about the future. It's that the future doesn't worry me. It's like somehow I have some sort of courage. The courage or the audacity to jump into things they don't really know so much about. The courage to try many, many things in life and not be afraid to in some way follow your dream. I started becoming an artist when I was at St. John's. I found that the college is an incredibly flexible place. It's kind of like a template upon which you can fix your own dreams. It's not about what you want to be, but who you want to be. Let's get in there. Oh, come on, y'all, bring it in. They're the one that got a chip on their shoulder, not us. It ain't about nothing except basketball. One, two, three, minus! Oh. Dampier's a great ball handler. So you try to take it from him, he's gonna burn you. Oh, come some, on, coach. Some people say he's the best guard in the country. If I had a choice between him and you, I'd choose you. That's good, coach, because you know he wouldn't have chose me. I bet a lot of them ended up doing things that they didn't know they wanted to do, but discovered they really wanted to do. When a lawyer was asked how St. John's prepared him for his job as a lawyer, he said, well, it taught me how to read critically, and it taught me how to analyze arguments, and it taught me how to speak in a public forum. And when a farmer was asked how St. John's prepared him for farming, he said, well, what did St. John's teach me about farming? Absolutely nothing. But what did St. John's teach me about why I needed to be a farmer? Absolutely everything. St. John's is an education in probably the fullest sense because you will keep doing what you did at St. John's the rest of your life. I became what I did. I am what I am well, solely because of the St. John's experience. My grandfather died left me a thousand acres of land. That was a sign from him saying, this fellow is, is the one I'm putting my trust in. She was determined that Montessori was for everyone and not just for people who could afford it. Maria Montessori's earliest work as a doctor was treating abandoned children in a mental asylum in one of the poorest areas of Rome. She was a doctor and a scientist and she looked at children to see how they developed. They were her laboratory. They say there's a hundred languages of children that's unique to the Reggio philosophy, that every child has a hundred languages, that they can learn in all of these forms of expression, whether it's clay, whether it's paper making, whether it's dance, drama, musical instruments. So she observed their behaviors and then one day she spotted that the children were playing with bread. It was this manipulation of the bread that made her think if these children had something to manipulate, they might develop better skills. A keen engineer, Montessori designed sensory materials that embedded children's learning in the physical world. And she established a revolutionary philosophy that children are inherently independent learners. The exact models for the materials she designed over a hundred years ago are still in use today. Music is a powerful language. In our classrooms, the children plant the seed of interest. Then the teachers 
bring their resources to bear on this interest. The initial discovery of learning through doing is really key to how the Montessori approach works. In her day, that was very, very revolutionary. Although her method was rigorously scientific, Montessori would go on to become the leader of a worldwide movement steeped in the language of mysticism and spirituality. In Kentucky by three. Four two. All American Louis Dampier guarded tightly by Bobby Joe Hill. He reverses his dribble and fires from 18. And it's good. There it is. That was a big shot. Miners look to answer. <laughs> In her own private life, she was a deeply unconventional and rebellious figure for her time. She never married, abandoned her son to be raised by relatives, and was forced to flee Italy when she came up against the wrath of Mussolini. Wiley breaks free. Now who will answer the bell for the Miners? Martinez passes it to Kater at the foul line. He slashes around Jarrers, takes it right down Main Street. So it comes down to this. Eight. Mussolini was just not into free thinking, independence, creativity, harmony, peace. Montessori strongly believed that she had found an infallible system that would revolutionize society, enabling the children of the future to be self-reliant, responsible citizens. While Montessorians throughout the world are evangelical about the effectiveness of the method, some educators believe it to be obscure, mystical or outdated. She was a scientist, she was a visionary. She knew that the world would change. She would appreciate all that we know now from neuroscience about brain development, from the development of sociocultural understandings. I can't think that she herself wouldn't have been influenced by that. In the middle. Wildcats get the ball to the high post. Thad Jarris has it. Slow it down, set it up, long line, get physical. They cut off him, now he puts it on the floor, goes to the hoop, and he is found and found hard by David Latin. A pair of free throws ties the game at 12, but... Montessori's practical system based on children learning independently and at their own pace would appear to be a difficult method to apply within the pressures of a modern state school system. But in 2005, Gorton Mount Primary in Manchester introduced the Montessori approach to early years and key stage one. Yeah. When we're talking about music, you know, we always want to remember with music that it's such a sensory experience for a child that they're being stimulated on all areas. We were able to bring children in and parents in to actually hear the sound and get the real effect of the instrument. I think we live a really unique life and I never pictured my life to be like this. This wasn't something I planned. It just really authentically happened. And Think about the word that they're choosing. Are you talking about socialization? Are you talking about the ability to socialize, to be a social person, to interact socially? I mean, these are all slightly different versions of the word, but that people sort of lump together as, is your kid normal? We're fortunate enough that I'm a work-at-home dad, which uh, gives us the ability to be with the children a lot. Um, it gives us the ability to travel. Um, it gives us the ability to show our children how to make a living by um, promoting your own business, by having a sale to get more customers, and uh, different ways to reach people and, and get the word out. I love my mom and dad. I love my mom first, my dad second. I want to be with them all the time. Grandma likes to eat lunch with me. I like to play with Grandpa's dusty toys in his office. I like to play with Grandpa's dusty toys in his office. I just love them. I just love them. It feels really right to us to, to be you know, in a partnership with our kids. 
There's no hierarchy in our house. Nobody is an authority. We are all equal. When a child in the twos takes a beautiful piece of paper and scribbles and it's put in a, a message box for them to send home to their mother, it's valuing that child's work. And although we're leaders, my husband and I, Joe, are leaders in our family, we definitely um, respect everything the kids say and ask for. So our role in life is to help our kids get whatever they want in life, more of it. And we facilitate their learning. And in doing so, it leads to a really joyful partnership. You can teach a child how to read. You can teach them the ABCs and the one, two, threes, and they could be reading everything on a page. But do they really understand what they're reading? Parents came into our three-year-old classroom where Margaret and Shirley worked with children and just listened to their ideas and helped them to create personalized poetry. It's pretty interesting, actually. I think what you're modeling and what we're doing is that we're, you know, we're not raising worker bees. We're not raising yes men or kids that jump through hoops or take orders. We're raising free-thinking entrepreneurs by living this way, and you're totally modeling that to them. And um, our kids have had their own businesses since they were four years old, from chocolate businesses to lemonade stands to Etsy stores and, and you name it. So I think you living this life has really inspired the kids to, to know that they never have to work for somebody else. You. We'll put together an awesome band. Cool. I mostly play classical music. This year I've been focusing on Debussy, Haydn, and now I'm working on a Chopin piece. They can make money off just pursuing their interests and passions in life like you have. I describe myself as a perfectionist and my husband is not. <laughs> I think that um, Joe is really authentic in who he is and he really owns his emotions when he's angry. He expresses it when he's happy, he expresses it. He's very um, just himself, uh, and he doesn't worry about what other people think. Uh, no, we are not strict parents in the sense of... Uh, That's the beginnings of literacy. We work on things like sequencing before a child can actually even read, and that goes into play in the poetry where, you know, you talk about the beginning, the middle, and the end. When these children are creating these poems, they're telling you a story. So that's pre-reading skills. Demanding obedience. Uh, I think obedience is old school. It's it's uh, imposing rules on your kids is a lazy form of parenting to me. Rules are rules are for the lazy parent. We find win-win situations with all of our uh, dynamics with our kids and uh, strict no, not at all. Very relaxed. Yes. We do not divide discipline because we don't discipline. I think that uh, discipline is um, really disrespectful. Everything and we discuss everything and we debate everything and if we didn't have the structure that we have of having two motions, a well-run school meeting where everyone gets their voice heard, the decisions that we made would not be as good. So at every school meeting we have an agenda like this and it has everything that you know we plan to discuss, every item of business. I think that what we do is we're good people in this world and we model like how to be good people. We model how to treat others and we treat our kids with respect and kindness and and from our perspective respect begets respect and kindness is a when you're kind the kids are kind so we don't have to do anything or impose any kind of rules or strict discipline we just are good people in this world and our kids learn from that can we have a report from the clerks Francis. we have five finished zero new and zero work in progress so we are now discussing regular jc business which usually takes about the bulk of school meeting. So the school meeting reviews all the reports and sentences and charges that the JC decided on. And sometimes they decide to change things, sometimes they don't. And right, because when you have no rules, you can't break those rules. So it's, it's hard to even, where do you draw the line at who's doing what wrong? There's no wrong. Right, exactly. I think what frustrates me about the way other people raise their children is they're just passing on what they were raised like. They, they just take what they know as a parent or a child um, and just instill it into their children and it just keeps on going generation after generation and uh, they don't try to grow their knowledge. We also deal with anything that has been referred to the school meeting so that's usually more serious cases that the JC has decided they can't handle within their power is used and I think that very much characterizes Montessori in the books and in what I've seen in classrooms that the equipment is there that the child shows an interest selects the equipment works with it to their own satisfaction completes it and puts it away and there is no need for 
social interaction.